I want to welcome you to Love KC Live Prayer. And today we're going to do a flashback. So in these live prayers, what we've been doing is interviewing people from around the city in Kansas City, talking about their vision for prayer. We've been asking basically three simple questions. One is, what are you praying about right now? What are the things that you have a vision for in prayer? And then third, what's God teaching you? Or what are some ways that God is answering prayer? And today I want to talk about a flashback. As we look back into a moment in time where we've seen God work in, in miraculous ways. And one of those was in 1991. Indian Creek Community Church was about six years old. And we were in our second school by that time and still a small gathering. When a man from the community asked me to go with him on a trip to Belarus, to uh, one of the CIS states of Russia. And I was considering that, but I was thinking that we didn't have the money. And I was a, a father of three and a husband and a pastor. I didn't feel like I had the time to do it. But uh, as I prayed about it, I really felt like God did want me to do it. And then at least I should give him a chance. There was a guy in our church who felt the same way. And he basically said, I'll raise the money for you. And so he went to work raising the money. And to my surprise, he did it in about two weeks. So that, that hurdle was cleared. The other hurdle was I still had to get my passport and I still had to be able to get to Belarus, get all the arrangements made and everything else. But as you can imagine, because I'm telling this story, that part did work out. One of the th things that was rather strange about that was that I found out about three weeks before I went that I was going to need to take money, $10,000, to the missionaries who were in Belarus. They were hidden there teaching at an academy for Campus Crusade for Christ. And at this international academy, they weren't really supposed to be there. It was underground. So the only way that they could get money would be as if someone would take it in. And pastors who came in to teach, like I was going to teach for two weeks straight, would bring the money that was their payroll into them. And so I was asked to do that at kind of the last minute. As I was trying to figure out how to do that, one of the ideas that came to me was to sew the money into my coat. So a woman who was a seamstress at our church was willing to take the lining out of my coat. And I filled my coat with $100 bills and $50 bills. And I felt like Arnold Schwarzenegger. The coat was all bulky and hot. And uh, I was, was worried that when I went through customs that they would find the money. It's a lot of bills to take on a trip. And so I was praying like crazy. I had people praying for me. And when I got to the border, I was able to get right through and no one found it. And I, I was telling the missionaries on the other side, I said, man, I'm just so glad to get by the authorities and, and be able to bring you this payroll. And I was sweating bullets literally the whole time. And when I told them that, they said, oh, the authorities, don't worry about them. The people you should be worried about is the mafia. And I thought, I'm glad I didn't know that at the time. But the teaching went good. I taught every day from like eight to five for two weeks, uh, 10, 10 days of teaching. And then in the evenings, they would do things together with the students, preparing these students for ministry. And it was tiring, but delightful. One of the evenings, uh, the second week that I was there, uh, they were going to go to an opera. I wasn't thrilled about the opera, but the thing that concerned me even more was I really didn't feel good. And I sort of felt like I was coming down with the flu or something like that. So I begged off and stayed in this little um, apartment that they had for me. And we would always have to stay alone because they didn't want us to be seen with anybody from the school because that might um, jeopardize us being there or the school being there. So I was I was there alone that evening, and as the evening wore on, I, I just felt worse and worse. I couldn't eat. My stomach was upset. My head was hurting. I felt like I was coming down with something. I thought I might have a temperature, and I was generally feeling kind of shaky. You've probably had those kinds of feelings before. And so when that happened, I went and I laid down. And as I was laying there, I was just praying and thinking about the days that were still left on the trip and wondering what it would mean to get sick over in Russia and in Belarus in a place where I didn't hardly know anyone. And as I was, was worried about that, I was laying there and I experienced something I've never experienced before or since. And what happened was that the, it seemed like the presence of the Holy Spirit surrounded me. 
like in a cocoon. I felt completely held and kept and surrounded by the Holy Spirit. In fact, it was so enveloping, it took over all my senses. I, I thought, I can't imagine what it would feel like to be in heaven if it doesn't feel like this. It was the greatest sense of love, greatest sense of strength, greatest sense of power. I actually felt like my body was almost like buzzing with um, life and vitality. And this feeling just surrounded me and continued for like 10 minutes. It was the most incredible feeling I've ever had. I felt like literally I was, was transformed from somewhere on earth to somewhere in heaven. And I did, of course, I didn't want it to stop. I thought if this is what heaven feels like, um, I can't imagine why Lazarus would have wanted to come back. But anyway, I, I experienced that for about 10 minutes or so. And then after that visitation by God, um, I felt completely well. All of my symptoms were gone. I got up, fixed dinner, had a, had a good evening, had a good night's rest, and had a good rest of the trip there. And so I've, I've never experienced anything so dramatic and powerful. And it's, it's given me ever since that time I, just a lot of faith to pray for healing. Because if God is willing to do what he did there for me, he would do the same for anyone. It, it really is a matter of his will. It's not a matter of whether he can do it. He obviously can. He studied the history. He did it through the Gospels and he did it in that, in that case. So I, I just remember now when I pray for someone, often I pray for the same kind of thing, that the, the power of God would envelop them and he would heal them and it would raise them up. We saw it happen in the Gospels. I experienced it and I believe that you can too. So I often pray for people with great faith. I believe that God heals today. And when I run into people who tell me that they don't believe that God still heals today, I point back to that experience and say, there's no other way for me to explain that. But the story gets even better. It's not over quite yet. When I got back to Olathe, I was telling that story on a Sunday. And one of the guys from my small group, Buddy Place, came up to me after the service. And he said, what, what day and time was that that you had that experience? And I had to think back and figure out the day. It seemed like it was a Wednesday and it was in the evening, obviously. And uh, he began to think back and he said, here's why I'm asking you that question. He said, I, I got to thinking about you at a particular time. And he said, I was so concerned about you and about what was happening, uh, what might be happening in your life. And he said, I didn't even know what it was all about. It was, it was around noontime on a work day. He said, I, I finally left my desk and went into the restroom and just prayed for you. And as I did, I've never had this happen before. He said, I don't think of myself as an intercessor, but he said, as I began to pray for you, I just felt sick. Like I was coming down with the flu. And he said, I just felt horrible. And uh, the worse I felt, the more I prayed. And he said, it went through my mind that maybe this is how Gary feels. And he said, I kept praying and praying and praying until I felt like that the presence of God came and just lifted that off of me. And when we could trace it back in time, because we were, you know, six, seven, eight hours earlier, or whatever the time difference was at that point in time, it was exactly at the same time. And we were able to realize that God used the prayers of Buddy Place, a guy who would have described himself as a very uh, average prayer. God used his prayers in that time to touch me halfway around the world. So I, I wanted to take time tonight to tell that story on, on the Love KC Live. We always say that our goal for this particular uh, exercise that we do on Sunday evenings is to remind us that, that common people can pray extraordinary prayers because we have a, a divine and all-powerful God. And there's nothing too big for him to do. There's nothing too little for him. If it's important to you, it's important to him. I'm thinking about a, a person who's a friend of mine right now who needs God's prayers for peace. She's having a heart procedure done tomorrow, and I'm praying and believing with her that God's going to give her peace uh, right now, tonight, and into the morning, and wrap her in a cocoon of his love in the same way that he did for me. I'm praying for another uh, young lady who's healing from some um, surgery that took place yesterday and her blood pressure has dropped but uh, we've been praying for her that it would come up and so i'm praying for linda for her heart for debbie for her blood pressure to come up i'm praying for ryan and jen who have covid 
In fact, I'm going to invite you just to pray with me right now. Let's do that. And since we're here together, I'm just going to leave my eyes open and pray with you. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much that you love us like you do. I thank you, God, that you hear our prayers, that your ears are always tuned to our voices on earth. You know the voices of your children. You can pick them out and you know the motives for which we pray. And so, Lord, I just love Linda to you. I thank you, Lord, for the healing work that you're doing and for what you're going to do. I thank you that the scriptures say that by your word that she's healed, by the word of our testimony, Lord, we lift her up to you. And I, I ask God that her heart would beat normally and that it would not race and that she would have peace and that she would feel your presence. And that, Lord, you would wrap her in a cocoon of your love right now, like you wrapped me in the cocoon of your love when I was in Belarus. And I pray, God, that she would feel power and strength and energy and that, that healing would bring you glory. I thank you, God, for the way that you love us. Lord, I lift Debbie to you and pray that her blood pressure would come up. Lord, you can, you can slow down one person's heart and you can raise the blood pressure of another person. I pray for Debbie as she heals, that her healing would be complete. It would be total. I pray, Lord, that she'll have strength and that the reconstruction surgery that was done, Lord, would be successful and that she'll give you the glory for it and that we'll all hear the testimony. And God, I pray for Ryan and Jen that you'll heal them from COVID, Lord. I pray that the pneumonia that they caught recently, Father, would just go away and that they would gain strength every day and be able to return to their work and be able to give you the credit. Thank you, God, that you're a healing God and that you want us to trust in you. Thank you, thank you, God, that you encourage us to have faith. And so we lift our faith to you today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. On these Love KC Lives, I also ask the guest, what's your vision for prayer? What are the things that you're hoping and praying for? And uh, for that at Love KC, one of the visions that we have is that every single person in Kansas City would have multiple opportunities to hear, to see, and to experience the love of God from a friend. And not from a pastor, they don't know. I'm, I'm a pastor and I'm praying for pastors, but I'm also praying for friends that will love God and love our neighbor. And that we as friends will reach out with the love of God and share it with others. I'm, I'm praying that every neighborhood in Kansas City would be adopted by someone who lives a pray, care, share lifestyle. And you can adopt your neighborhood through blesseveryhome.com. They even have a new app that you can download from the, Apple, the uh, iOS store, Apple or the Google Play Store, and you can have it right to your, your phone. One of the nice things about that is you can set reminders to remind you of when you want to pray for your neighborhood. And in the list version of blesseveryhome.com, you can go in and you can add people who are friends, who are co-workers, people who are just associates, anybody that you know. You can add them and they'll come right in with your neighbors. Every day you receive five names for which to pray. And if you were a school teacher, you could put your students in there. If you were a person who worked in, office, in an office, you could put your office mates in there. Uh, you can put anyone and they'll show up on your, your daily five and then you can pray for them. There's always a scripture that will remind you of what to pray about and give you some ideas and prompt your prayer. So I encourage you to do that. And I'm uh, just praying that every neighborhood in Kansas City would be adopted. I think that would take about 20 1,000 neighborhoods. Presently, we have about 3,000 that we know of that are adopted through blesseveryhome.com. And at lovekc.net, we give you equipping tools to teach you how to live your, your faith with confidence and how to share your good news with a friend. And if you go to YouTube, you can find a series of videos that are there called You Can Share. And in these videos, you'll hear the latest stories that, that we're gathering about people who are sharing their faith. I'll tell you one from last one last night. So I went to Texas this last week to go to a conference. And as I was flying back last night, I was on the plane with a young lady. And we, we were spending most of the, the flight just kind of chatting about nothing. And then about halfway through, she asked me what time we were going to land. And I told her it was about 15, 20 minutes. And I'm not sure if that triggered something in her or what, but she began to tell me about the divorce that she's going through. And I, I don't even know why she chose to start down that line of, um, of conversation, but she did. She dived right into it and obviously she needed to talk. And so I was listening to her and, 
talking with her and encouraging her. And um, I just asked her, I said, do you have faith? And she said, yes, I believe in God. And I said, how does your faith help you in a time like this? And then she began to tell me about praying and about leaning on scripture and about uh, going to worship and how that all of those things were helping her in a dramatic way. And so um, we just chatted about God and his faithfulness and scripture and his help the whole rest of the time. The reason I, I bring that up is that sometimes it's just one simple question that can turn a corner. We could have talked about the hard times of life and things that feel unfair and um, things like divorce, they're, they're extremely painful. And that could have been uh, just a conversation that we had, but by bringing faith into it, now she's reminded of God's love and the fact that he loves her unconditionally and the fact that he'll never leave her. Uh, and unlike this difficult experience she's going through, she can always count on God to help. And I think that, that what we need often is just the courage to bring God into an everyday conversation. So I'm praying that conversations like that will take place all over the, the city. And in this case, she did know Christ already, but it, it just encouraged her. In some cases, they don't know Christ and bringing the, him into the conversation gives us an opportunity to witness and tell others of his love. And then the last part of what we talk about on the Love KC Live is we always talk about things that we're learning, things that God is teaching us. And I would have to say that one of the things that God's teaching me in these days is to be patient and to wait on him and to wait on his timing. If we rush in and, and try to do things in our own strength or in our own timing or in our own way, then we'll, we'll get human results. But when we wait for God's timing and we do things his way, then we get this divine results. I was able to go to a conference in Austin, Texas uh, on this trip. And in the trip, they were doing something called Bless Austin. And in Bless Austin, they were having churches to take a day of prayer, same day each month in prayer, like the second Wednesday of each month or like the 10th of every month. And to have the members of their church pray during that time all for the 24 hours of that day. They divided them up either into half hour segments or one hour segments. And then as they did this and had enough churches, they actually have a 100 churches that are participating. They can have two churches praying for every day, for every hour of every year. And it's very exciting. It's no surprise to me that Austin is going on this, this exercise now to see every neighborhood prayed for every neighborhood adopted and every person prayed for by name. So they're doing the same kind of thing that we are, we want to do in Kansas City. But you can see the value of them going first because they've been doing this kind of day and night prayer for 12 years now. And so we have, we can pray. We can set the table. And, and right now we can be preparing our hearts. We can be preparing our city like, we, like God prepares the soil for the seed of the gospel to get planted in Kansas City. And so even though I want to see this thing happen now, I know that God is leading me to trust his timing and to build a greater sense of awareness in Kansas City of his love and his providence that is for each person and the fact that he's willing to work if we'll work with him and that we too can see our city one day bathed in prayer day and night. So thanks for joining Love KC Live. Thanks for going with me on a flashback tonight, hearing uh, an answer to prayer all the way back to 1991. And then remembering that God is still in the healing business today. In fact, it's, it's one of his names that God heals and he redeems, he delivers, he saves, and he's ready. He's available. All he needs is you. God bless you. Have a great week to come.